Speaking of the grave, speaking of death, we should be like little Johnny after church. Johnny tells his parents he has to go and talk to the minister right away. They agree, and the pastor greets the family. Pastor, Johnny says, I heard you say today that our bodies came from the dust, and when we die, our bodies go back to the dust. Yes, I'm glad you were listening, Johnny, said the pastor. Why do you ask? Johnny says, well, pastor, you better come over to our house right away. Look under my bed, because there's someone either coming or going. <laughs> Pete and Tony were great baseball fans. They were talking about baseball one day. Pete says, I wonder if there is baseball in heaven. Tony replies, I don't know. <clears throat> Soon after, Tony dies. One day, he calls Pete from heaven. They're talking, and Pete says, Tony, you got to tell me, is there baseball in heaven? Tony says, well, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that there is baseball in heaven. The bad news is you're pitching tomorrow. So <laughs> We're going to have some fun this morning. What a great topic, talking about hell and death. you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 39. If you don't, it's okay. We've got it. We've got it on the screen. Psalm 39, verses 4 through 6. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each day, each day is but a breath. Life goes so fast, doesn't it? This, this passage says it's but a breath. Think, think about it. Think about it for a second. Life is a and a it's over. How many of you here remember the 70s? Come on. I'm a 70s guy. But you know what? The 70s seem like yesterday to me. But, but they're long gone. But I get it because in the 70s, I had long hair. Today, I'm longing for hair. In the 70s, I was listening to acid rock. How about acid rock? Today, I have acid reflux, but that's a whole other story. In the 70s, we always talked about getting out to that new hip joint. Now, we talk about getting a new hip joint. Some of us, you know. The 70s was about the Rolling Stones. Well, they're still here, but now we've got to deal with kidney stones. You know what I'm saying, right? We try to slow down life. We try to slow down age. We, we try to slow it down because it goes so fast. And so we do all kinds of stuff to try to slow it down. We, we, we put on facial creams and eye creams and, and we get eye lifts and facelifts and we lift other parts of our body. We don't talk about that this morning, but we have other kinds of lifts. I, I have to confess to you this morning, as a matter of fact, I, I feel it right now, I, I have a spirit of confession coming on me that I too tried to slow down life. I, I tried to slow it down, I tried to do things to make me look younger. It's true, I tried facial creams. I tried eye creams, I did it, I really did. One time, I thought, man, I looked in the mirror, this is 2003 already, I thought, you are looking old, man. So I thought, i got to slow this thing down. I, I, I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dye my hair. So I went to my regular hairstylist, and I said, look, I, I, I need to dye my hair. I'm, I'm, I'm looking in. It's too gray, and I want to be an ash blonde. <laughs> Don't you look, think I look good as an ash blonde? Whatever that is. Well, he had other ideas and made me a redhead. <laughs> I was so angry with this dude. 
it wasn't just a redhead, it was this weird iridescent red glow as I walked out of there. It's like, I dyed my hair, I, I dyed my hair, I dyed my hair. I'm sending a big message out there. And then my dad decides to die. And I'm at the wake. People didn't even recognize me. I had this weird, weird hair, but life goes so fast. Was it just yesterday? Just yesterday, I was under the stars, northern Wisconsin, fishing with my dad, listening to him tell me about life. Yesterday, try 55 years ago. Was it just yesterday I got saved? I, this year it's 43 years that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. It goes like that. Next year, it'll be 40 years that my wife and I have been married. 40 years. <laughs> It seems like a moment. Well, if you ask her, it might be, she might say it's been a long time, it's years. Parents, moms and dads, was it just yesterday that we were holding our babies in our arms? Sometimes you get discouraged because I'm so small. I always leave my fingerprints on furniture and walls. Every day I'm growing up and soon I'll be so tall that all those, those little handprints will be so hard to recall. So here's a final handprint that I'm sending on its way of exactly how my fingers look on this Christmas day. That was 1988, Christmas. That was for my daughter, Kara. Now she's all grown up. Where did the time go? I know this sounds horrible, but in, in light of what we just talked about, the scripture and life goes so fast. Listen, by the time I'm done, friends, uh, we're going to be 30 minutes closer to death. <laughs> it goes that fast. Someone said this. The thought that our life is fleeting and will end someday should motivate us to redeem and live our lives to the fullest every day. Experts say that three people die every second, 100 people, 80 people die every minute, 10,800 people die every hour, 259,000 people die every year, uh, every, every month, 94 million 680. I'm sorry, every day it was. 94,608,000 people die every year. That's a lot of death. But listen, my message is way beyond the fact that life goes so fast. This morning, my message goes way beyond death. My message is about the fact that whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, and some do, some don't, we have two eternal destinies waiting for us, heaven or hell. And if you buy into the fact that life moves so fast, you better buy into the fact that a few minutes from now, you're going to be facing the king of kings, and you better be ready. Can I get a witness on that one? Well, national poll. I'm wondering, what do you think about hell? You may not agree with everything I say. I'm good with that. I just want to say that up front. This is a, from a biblical perspective. It's, it's my views on the story that we're going to share. I'm good with it if you don't agree with me. We're, we're all good there. But what does is, what is the, what is the nation think? USA Today poll, 67% of all Americans believe in hell. I, I got that. I think that's, that's pretty accurate. Less than 25% believe they will go there. Believe it or not, many Bible-believing Christians don't even accept the concept of hell. You hear things like, well, how could a loving God send a good person to hell? We've heard that. I, I understand. I get that statement. I really do. I understand it. 
there's a lot of religions and a lot of uh, people that think different things. You know, universalism is a re religion out there. Here's what they say about hell. Everybody goes to heaven. I want to be part of that church, man. Annihilationism is a smaller group. They say that people sent to hell eventually cease to exist. So what they're saying is there's no hell. You can do whatever you want to because you're going to go to hell momentarily, and then it's going to all cease to exist. It's over. Atheists, you know about atheists, they believe there's no heaven, there's no hell, there's no God. So an atheist dies, and somebody wrote on his tombstone, here lies an atheist, all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> Some think that hell is a joke. They joke about it. I'm a 70s guy. I love Aerosmith. Love him. I love Steven Tyler. I really do. Loved him on American Idol. Love his singing. But Steven Tyler was on the Howard Stern show one morning. Steven Tyler said to Howard Stern, here's to hell, Howard. May we have as much fun there as we did getting there. Are you kidding me? The Bible talks about hell. The Bible says that hell is a place of complete darkness. Now, I'm just going from the Bible here. Imagine darkness so thick that you can't even see your hand in front of you. The Bible says that hell is a place of weeping and grinding of teeth. It's a place of isolation, eternal frustration, eternal torment. Friends, it's not a fairy tale. Hell is a real place. So what did Jesus say about hell? He tells this interesting, incredible story in Luke 16, and this is where we're going to stay for the rest of the morning. It's Jesus' story on hell. Luke 16, I'm just going to read this story to you. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, who lived each day in luxury. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. Some say Abraham's bosom, the bosom of Abraham. We'll get to that in a second. The rich man who died and was buried, he went to the place of the dead, Hades, hell, if you will. And there in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. Listen to this. The rich man shouted out, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water. Cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime, you had everything you wanted. Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. Oh, I, this one. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here. No one can cross over to us from there. It is, that is chilling to me. Then the rich man said, please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. At least send Lazarus. I've got five brothers. I, I, I want Lazarus to warn them so they don't end up in this place. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, no, Father Abraham, if someone is sent to them from the dead, surely they will repent of their sins. Turn to God. Abraham said, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone comes from the dead. Friends, this is, an, this is a story, man. Now, some say this was a parable. Some say this was a real life event that Jesus was talking about. People say both things. I don't know what it is. I don't know which it is. But, but I will throw this out to you. Jesus gave 38 parables. His, in his 38 parables, he never mentioned anybody by name. In this story, there's three people. Lazarus, mentioned by name, Abraham, mentioned by name, 
and a rich man. This morning, we're going to focus on the rich man quickly. The rich man is in hell, and there's two things we're going to talk about. We're going to just take a look at hell. Two things. The first thing is this. There's great agony in hell. Whether you believe it or not, we, we don't want to debate that here. But if you believe it, there is great agony in hell. Jesus never mentions the rich man's name. He was probably well known. I would imagine at his funeral, I wasn't there, but I would imagine that it was a big funeral with a lot of people. I would imagine there were important people there. He's rich. I would imagine he was eulogized. Go with me on this. It's a funeral. I'm sure somebody said he was a great man. He was a man who helped a lot of people. And I'm quite certain that somebody said he's in a better place. But verse 23 in this story says something different. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. He went to hell. Here's one of the agonies of hell that we're going to talk about. Lazarus could see people in heaven. It's a story. He could see into heaven. <clears throat> now, when Lazarus died, his body was thrown on a garbage heap. But an angel came and took him to Abraham's bosom, side of Abraham. Now, here's a theology lesson for you really quick. The Jews believed that if you died, you were carried to this place at Abraham's side. And then they also believed that when the Messiah comes, because they didn't obviously believe a lot of them in the Messiah, when the Messiah comes, they were going to take all these people at Abraham's side and they were going to bring them to heaven. That's what was going on here. So every Jew listening to this story knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. But one of those agonies, the rich man, imagine this, the rich man could see into heaven, at least temporarily. And he recognized Lazarus and Abraham. Now again, this is just me talking. I'm trying to put myself here. Imagine a husband who doesn't know Jesus. He dies, and at least temporarily, he can see into heaven his wife who is with Jesus. Imagine children that didn't make a commitment to Jesus, and they see their parents in heaven, or parents in hell see their children in heaven, or friends see their friends. You, you, you know where I'm going this morning. Imagine that. I'm sure some of you are thinking, okay, I don't agree with any of that. I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Not a problem. I'm just presenting what I see in this story in the Bible. There's one more agony of hell I want to tell you about. Verse 25. Abraham said to him, son, remember that during your lifetime. That's a big word. Remember, you carry memories in hell. There's no Alzheimer's disease in hell. There's no do-overs. There's no mulligans. There's only eternal regrets. I would imagine if you make it to hell, you'll remember maybe an invitation that somebody gave you to come to Jesus. You didn't do it. I, I don't know. But, but let me share this with you, friends. Here, here, here's the good news, and this is good news. If you make it to hell, you got to work really, really hard to get there. Because you got to fight through the unrelenting love of God that pursues you constantly. You know the verse, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Hear me this morning. God's love is unrelenting. God's love is unfailing. His love is unconditional. His love is unmistakable. His love is fierce. God's love pursues every single person here this morning with a force more powerful than anything this world has ever known. If you're here this morning and you're a liar, 
It's okay. God still loves you. Maybe you're here this morning. You've committed adultery. Or you've sinned, some big sin. God still loves you. Maybe, maybe you, you've murdered somebody. It sounds bad, but hey, listen. Hint, if you're here as a visitor, you don't know who you're sitting next to this morning. <laughs> Maybe you've seriously committed a murder or some big crime. Hey, listen, God still loves you. Maybe you're an atheist. Maybe you're an addict. It, it's okay. God still loves you. I'm not saying that God approves of these things. But I'm saying that he loves you. And he has a plan for you. And he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Quickly, the second thing about hell that... That, that we should look at this morning is that you hear voices in hell, according to this story. The rich man cried out from hell. He said, Abraham, help me send Lazarus to cool me off. And I love it. Abraham says, hey, dude, man, uh, rich man, buddy, you, you had it good in life. You had everything you wanted. Lazarus had nothing. And then this conversation gets really sad. Abraham says, I can't send Lazarus even if I wanted to because there's a great chasm between us. None can cross. And then I, I, I guess I got to appreciate the rich man right now because <clears throat> I think he just realizes that it's over. He's got an eternal destiny. So what does he do? Doesn't think of himself anymore, right? Just send Lazarus to help my family. Just send Lazarus to come and warn my family. I don't want them to end up where I'm at. I got to appreciate where the rich guy's going with that. But you know what? Abraham says, look, you got Moses. He wrote it down. You got the message. If you can't believe that, it isn't going to happen. And this is true. A few weeks after this story, Jesus died. A few weeks after he told this story, he died. He rose from the dead. The Bible records in Matthew, I don't have time to put it up there, but you know, in Matthew, the Bible records that after Jesus died, saints came back from the dead. They walked around, and still people didn't believe. Think about today. We have unprecedented access to Christian books and Christian music, right? I mean, we've got Bibles everywhere. They're everywhere. We've got saints. We've got people that, that have given testimonies about healing, testimonies about, about you know, miracles in their life. Uh, where's Brian? Is he here still? Brian, Brian Schwaga is walking. He's walking. You don't believe in a miracle. But some still won't believe. Why talk about hell this morning? Why, why would I do that? I don't know. Maybe I thought if we got a glimpse of what hell really is, just a glimpse, maybe we'd be better evangelists. I thought maybe if we got a glimpse of what hell really is, maybe we'd have more urgency when it comes to our family members, people we work with, our neighbors that aren't saved. Maybe, maybe that's what I was thinking, but I want to throw you a curveball here as I close. I, I, I th yeah, the story's about hell. I think it is. But I'm I, I think there's something else in this story that I want to I throw out there as we, as we finish. I want to ask you a question. Who do you most identify with this, in this story? Is it Lazarus? Or is it the rich man? I would place a big bet that most of us would say Lazarus, right? First of all, most of us don't see ourselves in hell. But really, 
probably most of us here this morning, don't see ourselves as rich. So we identify with Lazarus. I want to stretch you here this morning. I think if you identify with Lazarus, I think you're wrong. The story is about rich people. The story is about what happens when we, most in this room, the rich people, I said that, the rich people don't respond to the Lazaruses of this world. Oh, I'm not rich. What are you talking about? Really? When you got up this morning, you didn't think, what am I going to have for breakfast? Will there be anything for breakfast? Oh, my gosh, will there be any food? You didn't think that. You, you thought, what will I choose to have for breakfast? When you woke up this morning, you didn't, you didn't think, will there be anything to drink? No. Most of us, myself included, said, thought, well, should I have a skim latte or a latte or a macchiato? Or, or how about just a good old-fashioned $5 Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts? That's weaker coffee. I like Starbucks better. But <laughs> Star Dunkin' Donuts is weak. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Patrice. <laughs> it's not. Some people like Starbucks. Some people, But that's, you know, that's what we were thinking. We didn't get up this morning and say, will there be shoes for me to wear? We thought, what shoes will we wear? You didn't get up this morning and look into your big closets. I'm guilty. What clothes? Will there be clothes? No, we looked in our closets. And we said, what clothes will we, will we wear? I, I understand that everybody has different bank accounts, different things. I, I, I understand that. But listen, friends. Most of us have more than 95% of this world. We're rich. Oh, oh yeah, I, I get it now. I get it now, Brian. You're talking about third world country. Oh, no, no, no. Take a stone and throw it to a town over there, a town over there. It's our neighbors. We're rich. This story's for us. Then who's Lazarus? Open your eyes, friends. Lazarus is all around you. Lazarus is everywhere. Lazarus is hungry. Lazarus is thirsty. Lazarus is the homeless. It's the poor. Lazarus is those in prison. Lazarus is the poor in spirit who are lost because they don't know Jesus. Jesus said, when you serve the least of these, when you serve Lazarus, you're serving me. Friends, my, my, my hope, my prayer for me, for you, I, I, I'm going through this myself, as you leave here this morning, look for Lazarus. He's everywhere. Don't make the same mistake that the rich man made. Because if we, the rich man, make the rich men and women make that mistake, we may be very surprised at what eternal destiny awaits us. Father in heaven. I pray for myself. I pray for my friends here this morning. Oh, this is not a fun me message. <laughs> it's not fun. And, and I realize, Lord, that we have a, one, probably different opinions in the room here. But, and I, I, so I pray, Lord, that, I pray, Lord, that you open our eyes to, to glimpse maybe fact that our lives move so fast, to glimpse maybe that we better take a look at what awaits us with our eternal destiny. I pray for my brothers and sisters here this morning. I pray for all the visitors here this morning that we would get a glimpse, that we would open our hearts, open our eyes, 
open our ears to Lazarus to serve those people, Lord, that you desire us to serve. Thank you for this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the fellowship that we have together. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for friendship. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your unrelenting love, Lord Jesus. Jesus' name I pray.